Hello everyone, Stephanie Davis here today. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm sharing two cards that I made on how to share watercolors with friends. And the first thing I'm going to do is stamp out some of these watercolor tubes. These are from a stamp set from Waffle Flowers called Little Painters. And I will have all supplies linked below if I forget to mention something. Sometimes I can get a little chatty and then forget to tell what I'm doing, so I apologize in advance for that. So I'm stamping out some watercolor brushes as well. And this is one thing that really drew me to the stamp set because it has some really cute quill mops watercolor brushes that are some of my favorite. And not a lot of sets have that. And then I'm also using this super cute stamp set from My Favorite Things. And I saw this little girl and she looks like a little French artist, I think, with her little beret. And so I couldn't wait to stamp those out. And I've actually had this idea for this card for since the stamp set came out, but I'm just now getting around to sharing it. So I chose some watercolors that will match my background paper, and I will have all the colors linked below, but I'm using Quinacridone Magenta, Prussian Green, and Schmink of Violet. So I'm doing my watercoloring really quick and simple, which is why I love watercolors, and I'm doing a wet-on-wet -wet technique, which means you wet the area you're going to watercolor, and then you start using some paint over the wet areas, and they're just kind of damp. And that allows a softer look and it just makes it really easy because it kind of tells the paint where to go. So that means I don't have to emboss all of my images anymore. But if you are just starting watercoloring for the first time, I felt embossing was the easiest way to kind of help me stain the lines. I don't need to do that anymore because I've been loving watercolors for about a year now. And so now I don't have to emboss everything. But when I started, it was a huge help. So I'll mention that in case you're new. So I fell in love with watercolors about a little over a year ago, and I find them very relaxing. I find them easy and just, it kind of made me just become obsessed. And I just keep learning and trying new brands. And so now I have gotten several and I have a few duplicates, and I thought I would love to share them with my friends because truly, as long as I've been card making, I've never fallen in love with a product so much as watercolors. So I thought this would be a great way to share them and I apologize that I'm sending this out so late because I did this right after Thanksgiving but then I injured my arm and yeah I just it's just been you know real life so but I think this card could be changed into a Valentine's card or just about any occasion that you could think of and just changing the background and I think it's a great way to share watercolors with your friends. So now I'm using the Schmink of Violet to paint the last tube of watercolor. And I'm doing this similar, I approach it similar to when I color with Copics. I just start with the light and then I gradually build up the color to add more shading. And it's super simple and easy and I really enjoy this way. So now I'm going to paint the paint brushes. And I'm using some Spinel Brown and this is one of my watercolor palettes from Schmincke. I have it out of the case because I don't want my, I'm using a Tim Holtz glass mat and I don't want it to get scratched. So I have to keep a craft foam because I find this glass mat does scratch really easily. So I'm just going along the edges and I'll just add a little shading to the edges to add a little bit of shading to one to the right side. And then I made a highlight there on the left side because that's where I want it to be the lightest. So I just lifted a little of the color and then slowly but surely I can build up the color to be what I'd like. But I was trying to make this look like a real paintbrush and just have a little bit of a deeper color on the right side and then have it be lighter on the left side. So I stamped this out several times because I'm going to show you two different ways. I colored this once with watercolors, of course, because that is what this is about. But for those of you who don't like watercolors or you're not there yet, I get it. And it took me a while too because I couldn't understand the obsession. So I'm also going to share how I did this with colored pencils and that's why I stamped it out several times because my idea was to stamp this out several times and then I have a lot of friends that I have been wanting to share a, just a little something with and I can't give a tube of paint out to everyone or a pan of paint out to everyone but I can share like a few dots of paint with many of my friends. So I stamped those out many times with good intentions of sending this out to like 20 of my crafty friends. And then I hurt my arm trying to hang up Christmas decorations and I tore my rotator cuff and I 
never imagined it would affect so much of my daily tasks. Just getting dressed and basic things are very painful, much less trying to use distress inks or ink blending or <laughs> using a die cutting machine, anything like that. So but hopefully I'm on the mend and I can start making cards again and having all kinds of fun. So now I'm adding a little more shading to the side and I'm using some sepia, just a little bit. And I love that color for just adding a little bit of a shadow with the browns. And I'm just adding the shading where I think it would be. Again, much like I would go about coloring Copics. And now I'm gonna use a damp paintbrush to go ahead and start shading in the paintbrush. And I actually did these in watercolors, but I think the ones that I did add to the card or the ones I colored with Copics because I thought that turned out prettier. So, but I'm still learning and so I always like to try it different ways and see which one I like. So I'm using some silver Schmincke paint to color the tops and the middle and the bottoms of the Schmincke paints. And I was kind of using the silver and the gold just to see how they would turn out. But in the finished card, I did prefer the Copics for the paintbrush. I think I got better shading, but I've had a lot more practice with Copics. I am attempting to paint my first person with watercolors. I have never done this before. So I'm attempting to paint this using Naples Yellow Reddish. And then I do go in later and try to use a little bit of Indian Red to do some shading. But for the start, I was just using the one paint tone that looked like it was for Caucasian skin tones. and But they do have many other colors that would be for other skin tones as well. And then now I'm using the Schmincke Violet to start painting the coat. And again, I'm using the wet on wet technique, which means I just took a damp brush to, you don't want to make it too wet, just to dampen it. And then it makes it be, I find it easier to paint that way. That tends to be the way I like to paint and then I can blend it out really easily and then go back and add shading. And I'm using Prussian Green to paint the little beret. And you can see I'm just getting faster and faster and kind of looser and looser, but that's what I love about it is it, it's just so fast and easy. I find it much faster than coloring with Copics or colored pencils or anything else. But I still enjoy very much changing up my color mediums. I love trying all the color mediums because it keeps it interesting. And I like to joke that using new coloring mediums is how I keep it spicy in my craft room. Because I just like to keep learning and growing and trying new things. So I keep going back and adding more shading to the beret. And if you just use a damp brush, then you can blend the colors together really easily. And then now I'm going to use a Schmincke Gray that I will have listed below as her boots. And I use a damp brush again to blend it out, blend the colors out. And then I wanted to use Quinacridone Magenta, but then after I saw it, I didn't like it. So I just used a damp brush to remove the color and then went right on top of it with the gray. And I thought that looked much better. And then I just keep going back and adding a little bit more shading. And then after it dries, watercolors can tend to dry back a little bit. So then I'd go back and add a little more shading. And now I'm starting to paint the hair. And I cannot remember which color I used. I apologize, but I will try to link it below as well as the buttons. So now I'm going back with some Indian Red, and I really don't know which colors you're supposed to use for skin tones, but that'll be something I'll have to learn next. And then I wanted to add some color to her cheeks. So I added quite a bit, and then I went back and blended it out again with a damp brush. But I think it's really easy to go in and add more color and then blend more out. And I find watercolors to be very forgiving, so don't, don't be afraid to try. And try to remember that it's only paper, and so if you mess up, you can just try again tomorrow. And I do enjoy the learning process, just like I did when I started coloring with Copics. And it seemed super scary and intimidating at first, but after a while, then you realize it's supposed to be fun. And so you just kind of forget about the rules and just have fun. So now I'm going back, and I'm adding a little more detail, and I'm using a damp brush to kind of 
try to clean up it the silver did leave a little bit of opaqueness to cover some of the black lines that I didn't enjoy very much so I, did, I tried to remove some of it and then I'm also adding some more shading to the watercolor brushes it was too black and I'm trying to add a bit of brown in there and then I should be and now I'm going to add a little more to the cheeks and I was actually using opera rose for the cheeks which is a really bright color but once it dries back and I used a damp brush to get some of the color out, it really looked pretty cute, I thought. Now on to assembling the card. So I took a rectangle, stitched rectangle die to cut a card base. And I'm using the lip pouches die, cording die, to cut out a hole onto my card base. And this is going to allow the pouch to go through. Now I'm taking my card base and the actual card and I'm trying to line this up on my light pad because I was trying to find an easier way to line up the escape hatch for getting the paints out for the recipient. So I'm using this rip strip die, which I love this die. I've used it so many different ways. But I figured this would be the perfect way to make an escape hatch for the recipient to get the paints out without ruining the whole card. So I'm using washi tape, of course, to hold everything together. But this light pad allowed me to line it up. So if you don't have a line pad, I use mine all the time, but if you don't have one, you could try doing your a sunny window as well. But I just use the washi tape and I'm pulling it off gently to make sure it doesn't tear. And then that's going to be on the actual card. And then I just use my bone folder to redo the crease and make sure that it's going to line up properly. And I'm testing it all out to make sure it's going to work because this is where I get busy sometimes and I will mess up a card nine times out of ten at this stage because I'm usually trying to hurry, it's usually time to make dinner, and this is where it gets a little dangerous for me in my craft room. So I have all these images and I'm going to, I've watercolored them, and I'm just going to go along the edges with a black pen and then it's just going to add a little more contrast and then I'm going to use a I didn't, it was a little too harsh, so I decided to use a black colored pencil. And this allowed me to go along the edges where I wanted a little more shadows and just add a little more detail. So I'm using the coordinated dies to cut that image out, and I think she turned out pretty cute. And so I start to go ahead and line up all the images that I want to use to complete the card. And I did use my scanning cut to cut out the tubes of paint as I did not have the coordinated dies. And now I'm using the Secret Santa stamp set to for my sentiment, and I used some dies to make a snowbank, and so I'm going to stamp that out on the snowbank. And it's going to say, have a magical Christmas. And I usually double stamp my sentiments because I really like to have a really sharp black stamped image. And after I get that stamped out, I'm going to go along with some little adhesive and this is score tape. This is the eighth inch score tape which is the perfect size for little embellishments like this and I am applying this to the back of the card because I'm going to cover it with some white paper which is just going to make it look finished but I thought it would also hide the adhesive. So I was able to stick the little pouch in and stick it right on there and then I had added more of the score tape to this cover up and then it's going to cover the adhesive as well as just make it look more finished on the inside because when they tear it open it's going to be all exposed so you don't I don't know if you really need to do this but I just thought it looked more finished this way and then I have another one that I cut out in gold and that's the one that's going to go on the front so this score tape was finally my perfect adhesive to use for things like this because I've tried using liquid and sometimes I had smears and this score tape worked out really well for this. So I can highly recommend that. And now I'm using some extreme adhesive and I'm going over all of the places except for that part where I had used that rip strip die. I don't want any adhesive there. And now I'm trying out all the different paints to see which ones will fit. And the pans fit the best in the back and I just have to hold up that middle one because the middle one wanted to fall back. So I kind of hold it in place and then I will attach it to the actual card. 
And the other size that fit really good in these pouches are just any of your 5 ounce watercolors. The 15 ounce watercolors are too large, so none of those fit. We need a larger pouch for those. But I thought these fit looked really nice lined up like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my snowbank and start assembling the card together. So a few areas I did mess up and go out of the lines just a little bit. So I just used a white gel pen to hide those little mistakes. And then I start adding some foam tape to pop all these images up and apply them and go ahead and adhere them to the card. And for a few of them I needed to cut them in half. They still weren't quite small enough like the little water brush and now she can be holding the water brush and I'm cutting the ends of these bows off and trying to figure out where I want them. So I'm lining all this up and then I'll go ahead and adhere them to the card. So I'm hoping to get more watercolors for Christmas and I thought that these would be cute kind of hanging up out of the sky with these gold bows like they were being brought for as a gift of watercolors. So I decided to cut off the bows to make it look like they're attached to the lid and then I'm using some adhesive to attach those and I always just make kind of a blob of paint and I've been having a little bit of trouble getting this out so I had to kind of stick a stylus in there to get it going again and then I attach all of these and then let them dry and then I'll go back and cut off the excess. So but I thought it looked cute having these three kind of hang down like she's being given watercolors for Christmas. And then I will remove the tapes on the foam tape and then attach her and then attach the brush. So I did try to cut her thumb and try to get that watercolor brush right in her hand. And I don't know if I actually did it, but I tried really hard to get that in her actual hand to make it look a little more realistic. And then lastly, I decided to use some snowflakes from Pretty Pink Posh. I did pick those up at the MFT shop, but I thought they just get a, gave this card a little bit of sparkle that I wanted for this holiday card. And I just took a little bit of adhesive on the very backs and placed them behind the paints and down at the bottom of the card. And then after the bows had dried, then I went back and trimmed those off and opened the back of the card to get that cut just right. And that completes the card. And it's I think it turned out pretty cute. And then when you open it, then it shows where they can tear and get those paints out. So now I'm showing a little bit of the footage of me coloring the water color brushes and I colored these with Copics and you can see the colors that I used above in the left side of the screen but I just did the typical coloring where I do the lightest shade and then add some more shading and I'm a, I've used Copics much longer so I'm much more proficient at coloring Copics than I can get the shading down and then I go back with a lighter color and blend it all out and then for the tops uh, for the hair bristle part of the water brush, I color them just like you color hair. And I actually wind up turning it upside down later and it winds up being better. But I am going to put on some music now so you guys can just watch me color and I'm going to show coloring of the colored pencil as well. And I will be back in a little bit.
So I decided to try a new blending medium, and this is MCT oil. I had seen a video on YouTube saying that coconut oil worked, but again, it turned rancid apparently after a while. So I thought I would try MCT oil, and I have to say it blended really nice. I really liked it, and there was no smell. I didn't have to worry about having the windows open, and I will be trying this again, and I test, I'm going to have to keep this for about six months to find out if it darkens or anything funky but so far I really liked using this and I'm just using a paintbrush and here this solves the problem of why I don't use colored pencils more I really haven't found a solvent that doesn't uh, smell to me or make me think that it's toxic and dangerous for me to use so I really really enjoyed using this MCT oil and I hope you have some if you've done any of the popular diets you probably have some of this in your pantry so it's another item you can just try out for free. So now I'm going to put on some music and let you watch me. I basically just use the paintbrush, just a little dab of this MCT oil, and it blends all the colored pencil beautifully. Once I had completed coloring all the images, I decided to line them up, and I'm not going to show the entire card because I pretty much did the same thing I did on the first card, other than my coloring technique using colored pencils, and then I'm going to switch up the colors, of course. So I wanted to get these lined up, and before I adhered them to the card, I wanted to make sure I had my colors planned out. So I was testing out different colors to see which one I thought looked best. And any of your five milliliter paints work perfect in this. I mean, just, it, it looks like it was made for it. And I decided to go with this pink color paint and I popped it in there. So I hope this gives you some ideas of how you can share watercolors with your friends. And these are both of the cards that I made. And I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.